I'm about to give you some exercises to do, but before I do that, I, uh, I'm going to give you a summary of all the things on limits. And if you don't understand any of the following, then um, then scroll back to some of the earlier videos. So when so to, so remember that the limit of this here is one. But when given this limit here, I'll try and visualize it as a, as a reciprocal uh, multiplying uh, a sine of x. So, um, so when you look at your, so, so when given this here, visualize it as, as one block multiplying another block. So when, when you look at the uh, sine of x, it will look something like this. Your sine of x graph will look something like this. And then your, your reciprocal graph here will look something like this. And, uh, and when you, when you, when you multiply the two together, it will look something like this. And for some strange reason, it goes through one at x equals well, not goes through one. The limit is is uh, is one as uh, as x approaches zero zero here. Okay. So um just yeah. So so when when bear in mind that the limit of this here is one. Okay. But but when you visualize this graph, visualize it as this one block multiplying another. So here visualize your sign, and then here re visualize your reciprocal and merge the two together, and it will look something like this. Okay, well anyway, um, the, the other one was this one here. The limit of this here is uh, as x approaches 0 is 0. But when, when, you, when you try and uh, understand this bit here, visualize it as a series of transformations. So you, um, you start out with your cos of x and then slowly transform this graph into, uh, into this here. And then, and then try and understand the graph in order to understand this whole thing here. Okay, so, so to understand this here, visualize your, your cosine graph. It will look like this. Apply the, um, apply this transformation, f of x minus 1. That, that will give you this, and the graph will look like this. So you, basically, you, you would drag everything down by 1. Okay, so, so it will give you this here. And then the next thing is to, um, to reflect it along the, um, along the x axis. So, um, so it's you applying this transformation here. Okay, then, and then, and then, so, so when you apply that transformation, it's, it's in effect you multiplying by, by minus one. So, so it's you multiplying by minus one. And when you get this times this, and this times this here, it will give you this. Well, anyway, when you, when you're, when you're here, then, then, uh, reflect it along, um, along the x axis, and then it will give you this. So your, so one, oh, one minus cos of x, um, is this here. And now, now you can visualize it as, as a, a reciprocal timesing, timesing, uh, this thing here. And what, so, so, so when, when, when given this here, visualize it as, well, break, well, start out with your cos of x, and then, and then you slowly transform it into, uh, into this here. And then, and then visualize it as, as, uh, as a reciprocal, uh, multiplying this bubble here. So, so this, this block here is in effect this graph here. Hang on, this, uh, uh, this, hang on, uh, it's in, in, a, in, in, hang on, sorry. This, um, this block here, this block here is in effect this graph here. Okay, this graph here. So, so one, one minus cos of x is, is this graph here. Now visualize it as, as, um, a reciprocal here multiplying the the above graph here this graph here and then and then you so your your um your your one minus cos of x will look something like this up here and your reciprocal here will look something like this and when you merge the two together it will look roughly roughly something like this okay uh, so the uh, so so you can see that it's heading towards zero here when, when x approaches zero. When x approaches zero, this whole thing here heads towards zero. And, um, and the, the other important thing is that, no, because we know that this, this here, when, when it, no matter what function you have, it doesn't matter what function, if you know, if you know the limit, if, if you know it crosses that zero, then the, then the negative version of this function here, so suppose this is g of x here, then the negative, the, the, if you apply the transformation, uh, minus g of x here. That's you reflecting it along the x-axis. So no matter what function you have, if you if you get the negative version, because uh, sorry, hang on. It, it, looking at this g of x here, if you apply this transformation, it will look something like this. 
Hang on. And then and then something like this. You see, because g of x here, because because whatever function you have here, if the limit goes well, if, if the limit heads towards if the if it goes through zero here, then then the negative version will also go through zero, even though it's not going through zero. Um there's a gap at zero. But my, my point is that no matter what function you have, if you know the limit is zero, if it cross if it crosses at zero or, or if it goes through zero here, the negative version of this function here will also be zero. So my point is that you've got you've got something that you know the limit is zero, meaning you can you can imagine it as going through zero, uh, even though there's a gap there. Um, then you, then you know that the the negative version of this function, whatever it may look like, the negative version of it, which would be something like this. I don't know. Uh, uh, it gets bigger. So. Um, um, uh, well, it's it's going to go through zero as well. My point is that you've got a function here um, where you know the limit at zero at x equals zero uh, is uh, is zero here. Then then the ne then the negative version of this here will also will will um, will also go through zero. So remember the negative version of this is is this one minus cos of x. Over so so this this is our our function at the moment. The negative version of this here is is u multiplying by minus one. So here um it get it, remember minus one gets multiplied to the top. So it turns out to be this. So so because we know that the limit of this here equals zero, then then we know that the negative version of this, which is this here, will also the limit will also be zero. Okay, and um and the other well some other important. Uh, things to remember. You must know this here. So, um, so you you can visualize this as a uh, a unit circle here, where where the where the hypotenuse is one. This the height here is uh, sine of x, and uh, this here is cos of x. And then you can use Pythagoras. Uh, sorry, theta. Then, um, well, the theta and x that we, we they're both variables. We we can change them around. Um, we can change them. Well, anyway. The uh, remember this. This is very important. Okay, and uh, yeah. So uh, the other one. Bear bear in mind that. Well, okay, the limit of sine one over one over x here does not exist because it, it it just oscillates so much faster as you approach zero. Just I've I've done a video on well several I think several videos um on this. If you uh, if you don't understand this, then scroll back to some of the earlier videos. But remember. So uh, the limit of sine uh, sine of one over x, the limit of that does not exist. And the last the last important thing you have to remember is that tan of x tan of x when when you look at unit circle, um, this here has a radius of one here. So um, so uh, so tan tan theta is really the the height here, which is sine x, and then. Um, uh, and then, and then this length here is cos. So, so well, you can see that. Well, just just remember that this here. Remember that. Um, this is very important. Try to memorize it. Okay.